Welcome to another Time Tracker tutorial video. In our previous videos, we have shown how to use the Time Tracker Reporting API reference and also how to connect to the Time Tracker API by using Postman and Excel. In this video, we are going to show how to use Postman to compose an API call. To get started, we need to copy the latest stable API route here from the Time Tracker reporting and API settings page. So we are going to copy it and paste it over into the request URL field in Postman. The next thing we need to do is we need to select the endpoint that we are going to query. So to do that, we're going to navigate to the reporting API reference from the same settings page. We will select the work logs work items endpoint, and we can just copy this over here, we can delete what we don't need. And we can just query the endpoint itself. Now, when we query the endpoint itself, we get all the fields for all the work logs and work items related for this endpoint. And this is not ideal. So we want to limit our results to make our call faster. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a select to our query. When we expand this endpoint here in the reference, we can see all the fields that can be queried by default from the endpoint. We can also see that there is a possibility to query additional fields, and we only need to check the full list in the reporting work item model in the schema at the bottom of the reference. But for now, let's query some fields that are already here in this endpoint by default. So for instance, we can query the username. That's always useful. We can query the work log date, short date, the work item system ID, uh, the system team project and the system title. And let's go ahead and start by adding the username. So in order to add the username, we see that user is the main field and name is a subfield. So we're just going to go ahead and add a select we need to use the forward space separator to access the subfield user forward space forward slash name. The same thing we are going to do for the work item system ID and work item system title. Work item system ID, work item system title, system team project. So to make things faster, we can just copy and paste. System team project. The next thing we want to take is the work log date, short date. And we also might want to know if the work log is billable. So we can add is billable and we will definitely need the timestamp and the period length as well. The timestamp is the date and time of the work log itself and the period length is the duration of the work log.
So now that we have our select for the fields that we want, we can just hit send. Now we're encountering an error, which says that the property system ID has a null value, which is not allowed. So what we have to do in this case is we're going to add a filter. which says that the work item system ID not equal null, does not equal null. So we want only the results where the work item system ID is not null. And now we get these results. And as you can see, we only have the fields that we have specified in the select part. However, we're still querying the entire endpoint. We're still querying all the data in the system for all the work logs and the work items, although we are filtering now for only work logs where the system ID is not null for the work item, meaning work logs that are associated with a work item. But we want to filter this even more. To do that, we're going to use the work logs filter. So let's go ahead and add the work logs filter. And we're going to use the time step field. And we want the time step field to be greater or equal than a specific value here. So greater or equal than this date and this time. And please make sure that you're using exactly this format because this is the format that the Time Tracker API is expecting. And we can limit it some more. We can say this timestamp is lower than, and let's say, I already have this date here. So let's limit it to be lower than the 30th of January 2023. So it's going to, going to be only work logs for the time period between the 1st of September 2022 and the 30th of January 2023. So let's go ahead and click send. So now our results are a little bit more limited. We are specifying more what we want. However, we could also specify it further to make the query less heavy on the API. So we can add a work items filter. And we can use system team project equals super project. And now we will only be getting the results for work logs belonging to work items that belong to this team project. What we can do now with our results also, we can order them. So what we are going to do is what we are going to order by work log date, short date. And we can say ascending. So ascending, we see here that it starts with the lower dates and start going towards higher dates. Or we can try descending and we will see that the higher dates are the first ones shown.
and going towards lower dates. What we can also do is if we don't need all the results and we only want a certain amount of results, we can do top 10. So we will only get top 10 results for the query that we have written and no more. So as you can see here, the short date ends in October of 2022. And if we change this to ascending, then we see here it starts in September and it ends in December. Thank you very much for your attention and patience, and thank you for using 7Pace Time Tracker.